Can I ask you guys a question? Think of the people in your life that you really, really care about. Whether it be your neighbors, your coworkers, your fellow students, your teachers, or your friends and family. Think about all those people. If you were in a position of power, especially political power, if you were part of Congress, if you were part of the government, or if you were, uh, or if you were president, what would you focus on in order to protect those that you care about? Because for me, the first and biggest thing that I would focus on in order to protect the people that I care about would be gun control. Now I believe, and I'm just gonna be blunt, that gun control is a touchy subject in a sea of touchy subjects. There's no doubt about it. But I also believe that it's important. And it's important because, it's a ne because I believe that it's a necessary part of our current society. And I'm going to talk about why it could be a, it could potentially protect us, protect someone we love, and protect our nation as a whole, putting us on a greater path, path to safety. The first thing that I would like to bring up is a touch, is something that's thrown a lot around a lot when it comes to school shootings, especially. And that is mental illness. Like, you see articles about it all the time. It's always the article of some kid with a mental illness picked up a gun, lost it, and fired off at his job at, at a school. We need to focus on mental illness, yes, but we can't use that, the term... We need to use it more delicately. We need to focus on mental illness the same way we would infectious diseases, STDs, or cancer, we diagnose it. Now, doctors and psychiatrists and physicians have already been put into place at, at various sites where you can own a gun, and that's a step in the right direction. But it's not entirely enough, because there are some states and gun shows where you can, in fact, buy a gun without a background check, a psych evaluation, or or even a permit, a license to carry, and basically, and there's two sides of that coin, like, anybody can have a gun and have all the responsibilities that come with it by just passing a simple test, but on the other hand, in some states, like Alabama, people don't need, necessarily need the permit to carry or the background checks in order to carry a gun, meaning anybody can carry a gun, and we need to enable to enable psychological evaluation and mental health. We need to put that forward first in all cases, but especially in this, if we want to better ourselves, to better protect ourselves, and to better protect the people who could potentially harm both themselves and others before anything bad can happen. And that, I believe, brings me to my next point, and that's the background checks themselves, the you know, you've heard it all before, the background checks, the psychological evaluations. Now, when it comes to mental illness, it's very rare that somebody will willingly be violent towards other people or willingly eager to, p to pick up a gun and j or just to be violent towards another person. Like, ac according to an article by The Conversation that I read, and this is a recent article, it says that not everybody should, that not everyone who, who has a mental illness is prone to violence, and that if he, and that the decision to give, to enable a person being able to own a gun should be in the hands of a doctor or psychiatrist that evaluates them. And I happen to agree with that, but I also think when it comes to things like background checks and when it comes to evaluating people's psychological status and and all all that stuff, you know, all the important stuff. Like I feel that it's important that we place these first and foremost because well, in this day and age, anybody can really pick up a gun with or without a permit in some instances. Like in March 
according to an article that that I read by NBC News in March, there was more than 3.7 million background checks and purchases for guns in the United States because of the coronavirus pandemic. And this shows to me that not only are people willing, a, willing and eager and able to pick up a gun if they so choose and if the chips are down, but it shows how this is a necessary process and if there's more than 3.7 million people out in the world picking up a gun because of a pandemic, who's to say that there are the, that there isn't even more people out there trying to pick up a gun who don't have background checks, who don't have permits? We need to place we need to place evaluators and checks in every site that it could be possible to get a gun, whether it be a gun show, a range, a like a, a shop of any kind. Like even it, it's, we need to pass these laws in countries or in states, in any place possible, if we want to best protect ourselves. Because we can't just have access to guns. Like if, if people get guns, go for the guns that quickly and that easily, who knows what could happen? And then there's the topic of children and guns. See, it's not very likely to find a household or a bunch of states where they own a gun safe. Making it easier for children to find guns hidden somewhere around the house in not so secretive locations, we need to focus on enacting the child access prevention laws that have been put into place in 27 countries across, in tw I mean, 27 states across the world. We need to focus on enabling those in every state possible if we can, because if a child can gain access to a gun that easily, what hope do we have? We, we need to protect children from guns and we need to keep them as secure as possible away from them if need be because who knows what they could do what a gun could do if it falls into the wrong hands especially young hands and young minds who don't yet understand the consequences of what might happen and what might come with them firing that firearm and I bet you're wondering like like what what why should I be talking about this? What 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 is my opinion matter on this? Well I'll I'll tell you. I chose this because I have known people with mental illnesses. And I have known people with mental illnesses who have carried guns before. I've know I know about this because my dad I chose this because my dad has owned firearms and does own firearms because it comes with his job. And my dad's a, a responsible, he, he tries to be a responsible gun owner, but at the same time, we both acknowledge that it's hard because people can just buy guns, like we said, at gun shows. Like, we never know, like, what, like what could come of a person getting a gun. We need to enact these laws sooner rather than later in order to protect people. Like, just last week, Justin Trudeau banned assault rifles in Canada because of the mass shooting in Nova Scotia. We need to focus on protecting ourselves and protecting everybody as much as possible. And that, that, that brings me to my final point. That's what this is about. Protection. We need to protect the people we care about. We talk so much about wanting to protect our friends, our families, our neighbors. This is the right direction in protecting our friends, families, and neighbors. And people can be on the fence as much as they want. People can disagree with me all they want. But if we don't enact gun control laws in every state, we will, we will cease to prevent more violence and more mass shootings, more accidental suicides, 
and more unneeded violence happening. And if we can take any step possible to prevent more destruction from happening, isn't it worth it? And that's why I think that gun control is necessary and important in our current society. Thank you all for listening.